Paul and Patty know this. No matter where they go or what they do, they always try to remember what to do if the atom bomb explodes right then. It's a bomb, duck and cover. Sundays, holidays, vacation time, we must be ready every day, all the time, to do the right thing if the atomic bomb explodes. Duck and cover. That's the first thing to do. Duck and cover. First, you duck. And then, you cover. You duck and cover tight. Duck and cover under the table. It's a bomb. Duck and cover. Thank God this never occurred for real. For people that aren't quite as old as I am, maybe a little history lesson is in order here. From 1947 to 1991, the world as we knew it lived through what was called the Cold War. Primarily, it was between the communist forces of the Soviet Union and the Western forces led by the United States. I lived through this area for several decades as both superpowers more than once squared off with one another, sometimes coming within minutes of launching a nuclear strike. To avoid the war, the United States adopted the Triad philosophy. The Triad was a nuclear deterrent forces that the U.S. had under its control. It consisted of the Intercontinental Ballistic Missile Program, the Submarine Launch Ballistic Missile Program, and the Strategic Bomber Force. The concept was a simple one. In the event of a first strike by an enemy nation, the opposing force might be able to take out one leg of the triad, or possibly even two, but not three, which would leave enough nuclear retaliatory firepower to devastate any attacking country. Blue Line RV Adventures visited one leg of the triad at the Miniman Missile National Historic Site located in South Dakota. Established in 1999, this site actually includes three different locations all located within minutes of each other by car. There is the visitor center, a now retired missile silo living quarters complex, and a mock-up of a Delta III Minuteman missile still within its silo and a clear plexiglass screen overhead so tourists can take a look. As we take you to this site, it does not go unnoticed by us that this is not a happy or joyous place, but it is a necessary place. The dedicated men and women of the United States Air Force had to man these locations 24 hours a day, 365 and had to be ready days on a moment's a notice to launch a retaliatory nuclear strike if the United States was ever attacked. Their mission was a simple one, to maintain the peace by always being ready and the men and women of the United States Air Force were completely successful in that. Okay, being the Navy veteran that I am, we're going to pay homage this afternoon to the United States Air Force. And I really have to say that because Karen's parents were both in the Air Force. In fact, your father was 22 years in the Air Force? Uh, 24, I believe. 24 years in the United States Air Force. No, just all kidding aside, we are going to pay homage to the Air Force today. We are going to the um, Minuteman Missile National Visitor Center, and we're going to go take a look at one leg of the strategic triad that kept this country safe for many, many years. So as we're talking about, we came in here, this is the uh, Minuteman Missile National Visitor Center, and I did said it was part of the uh, U.S. strategic triad. One of the legs was the strategic missile nuclear silos that are scattered throughout the central United States, even some in Arizona. The theory behind it was that if the Soviet Union were to launch an attack on the United States, that they would not be able to take out all three legs of the triad. They may be able to take out one or two, but not all three, and there would still be a deterrent factor to keep the Soviet Union from attacking the U.S. And uh, it obviously worked.
Okay, so for reference, we're gonna come out here to the uh, Minuteman um, strategic missile site. Um, there are ticketed tours and then there are non-ticketed tours. And if I'm getting my facts correct, what we've read, it is best to take the ticketed tour, which is unfortunately not what Karen and I did, because I think the ticketed tour, and there's various times to do this, are over in this facility, which is, I believe, where the U.S. Air Force personnel uh, were housed to, uh, for part of the time. A lot of it's probably underground. I think that might actually be that circular area right over there might actually be where the missile used to be kept. And But uh, as I understand it, to get into this section, you're going to have to take a ticketed tour. If not, basically you're just going to come out and you can see a couple of the restrooms they have here and the farmland that this missile silo was at and a really cool looking sign by the park service but if you're not going to pay for the tour or you inadvertently like karen and i did did not pick up tickets then really this is as close you're going to get to the silo anyways uh unfortunately for us but at least we got here and gave you guys a little bit of information that if you do want to get inside the silo or at least the, the control facility you're going to have to take a, uh, a ticketed tour we can take a tour of the restrooms right Smarter than the gate. I'm glad you did that because I would still be trying to figure it out. Again, this idea that these things are targets. Yeah. Part of the pressure here in the in the Cold War is you know, if if it's if it's 30 minutes from launch to target, by the time either side has <laughs> detected missiles, five to ten minutes has gone by, and then your commu you know, the, the communication chain to go to um, the president chain of command takes another five to ten minutes, and so the president now has. Four minutes or 90 seconds to make a decision so it can com be communicated the other direction so that you can launch missiles before the not missiles are hit yeah. yeah and and that there's a lot of risk in that scenario in that you know what if your detection systems what if your radars detect um geese flying or Sunlight reflecting off of clouds. Both of those things happened to the Soviets. <laughs> yeah, and they and they had somebody who, who stopped the chain of command. But famously, someone who violated the chain of command and yeah. said, "I don't, I don't think this is real." Yeah, and, I don't trust. I don't trust the data. Yeah. And and on the American side, you had in in, in 19, 1979, a training tape is left in a computer at NORAD and starts to run a first strike scenario. And about a year after that, a 50 cent capacitor burns out at Norad and does something very similar. Yeah. Where someone can say, you know, use that sort of human intuition to say this doesn't feel right. Okay, so that's the Delta 9 missile. And this, uh, in, my, in my opinion, is a lot better. If you don't have tickets, like Karen and I didn't have tickets, um, to, I would probably just bypass the Delta 1 because you really are going to be able to see is just the outside of some of the buildings and that's really it. We're here at the Delta 9. Um, you didn't need tickets. There was a ranger on duty. Um, he answered a lot of questions. He was giving some narration to people and you can actually see a Delta 9 missile um, down on the ground through some glass and they said it's 57 feet long and uh, there were thousands of those scattered all across the Whether prairie. Whether you call the Cold War from history lessons in school or live through it like Karen and I did, 
There is no denying that the Triad Nuclear Deterrent Forces of the United States of America was completely successful and protected all of us. The men and women of the United States Air Force's Strategic Air Command played a vital role in the defense of America, and each and every one of them should be commended for their actions in preventing a potential World War III. The National Park Service has done an amazing job at this facility to not only preserve our history, but to remind all of us to give thanks and gratitude to the men and women of the armed forces, both past and present. If you like this video or some of our previous videos, consider subscribing to Blue Line RV Adventures on YouTube. It's totally free and helps Karen and I continue on with our journey. Also, follow us on Instagram and Facebook for more real time updates on what Blue Line RV Adventures is up to. And don't forget, at Blue Line RV Adventures, we got your six.